Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back. Today's Daf Yomi is Yivam Aistaf Lamed Hey. I want to begin on Lamed Al Lamed Bey, six lines from the bottom of the Amid. In the Mishnah, we learned that there is a three month separation period required between marriages. And this is done in order to make that distinction, make that separation between first and second husbands, so that, for instance, if she gives birth seven months into the second marriage, you don't need to speculate whether this child is a seven-month child from the second husband, or perhaps a nine-month child from the first husband. In order to avoid this confusion, a three-month quarantine period, so to speak, would be implemented between marriages. So if she was divorced or widowed, she has to wait that amount of time before proceeding with the next marriage. Amar Shmuel, the Kulon Tzricha is Lahamten Shleisha Chadash. In all cases, the Isha has to wait three months. Whether she's a Gedoyla, who has the ability to conceive, or even a Ketana, even though there's no real concern about becoming Mu'uberes, we apply this wait period even to Oktana on account of Gedoyla. So we treat all women equally. But we have some exceptions. Chutz mi giyoyres. Umishachrares ketana. If ketana converts, becomes a yid, or she was a maidservant who was released. So although, as Rashi says, we're concerned about znus in these cases, but the fact is she's a ketana, unable to conceive, and, and therefore we... We don't make a gzera in this case. The Gemara soon will tell us because gerus and shechur are something uncommon, and as we know, generally speaking, chachamim would only apply gzera to something which is common, something which is shechiach. So we have two two of these cases accepted. We accept gerus, we accept mishachurus. They are exceptions to the rule if they are ktana. Avok ktana basi stroil. But if she's a Basi Yisrael and she happens to be a Ketana, we do not differentiate. Tzricha lahamten gimachadoshim. There is that required three-month wait period. And certainly when we're speaking about a Gedolo, who can become a Uberis, irrespective of whether she was a Basi Yisrael or Giyaris, it doesn't matter. We don't differentiate between Gedolos. Ubemai. Now, what happened? How did... Under what circumstances did she separate from her first husband? Ibn Mian, through Mian? She just walked away from him? In this case, you need three months? Vamar Shmuel, Shmuel himself tells us, there's no need to wait because this method of leaving her husband would never apply to Ogdoyla and therefore there's no uh, concern of confusion. It's not uh, something that uh, is reminiscent of the way Ogdoyla leaves her husband. So, in this case, there's no gezerah. Be beget. Was it through a get? Ha'amra Shmuel chadaz nimna. Shmuel himself already taught us this halacha. Domar Shmuel mi anaboy. If Iktana walks away from her husband, Eina tzricha lahamten shleisha chadashim. There's no need to wait. But nasan not get. If he gives her a get, and this is reminiscent of the way you separate from a gedoyla. So then there's that room for confusion. One account of the other. And we make the gezerah tzricha lahamten shleisha chadashim. There's a Wait period even by the Ketana. Shmuel himself already taught us this halacha wide repetition. Ella business. Shmuel's chiddush here is that a Ketana Bas Yisrael who was engaged in Znus, Chas in this case, we still have to have a three month wait period despite the fact that she's a Ketana. You know why? The Gazur Rabban and Ketana Mishim Gdoyla, we apply this rule to a Ketana on account of a Gdoyla. Umen Gazrin and Ketana Mishum Gedoyla asks the Gemara, what do you mean? A Ketana is treated like a Gedoyla? Look at the Mishnah. We learned yesterday about Tanan. In that case where they exchanged wives prior to marriage. What happens? Do they have to wait until they can go back to their real husbands? If they're a Gedoyla, yes. But Imo Yu Ketanois. She'enon Ru'ya Leila. That these women were really Ketanois who cannot be Miss Aber. Who can't have children, they can just go back to their rightful husbands. 
There's no need to wait three months. This um, is in contrast to, to what Shmuel just told us that Aktana and Agdol are treated equally by Israel. Amr Abgidam Arav Haras Shah It was just a one time halachic uh, ruling that was issued at that point. But it's not something to compare to other cases. What do you mean? Machlal Da Do you mean the story actually happened? The mission doesn't seem to indicate that it was a story. Shnaim Shekichu. It's an example of a theoretical case. Eloke Hara Rather, it means to say we treat it like a one time event. Rashi explains. How often does this happen? Wives uh, get mixed up before the chuppah. It's not something which is common. It's not something which is shchiach. Chacham did not see a need to apply a in this case by Yaktana. Ela kaira shah isa bechilu of leshchiach. Exchanging is not common. So according to the first lashon of Shmuel, we're very machmer when it comes to the hamtana of gimel chadash between two marriages. It applies to all the gedolos, and even to Ketana is except when it's really not shchiach. Or if it's not even reminiscent of the Gdoila situation, such as by Miun. Or by Znus. Sorry, or by, uh, by Chiluf. By the exchanging of wives, which is not Shechiach either. Lishna Achrina Amrila. There was a second version of Shmuel's halach. Amr Shmuel. According to the second version, he's more lenient. He makes uh, for more exceptions to the rule. Even by some Gdoilais. We will not need to apply this halacha. Kulon, Srichas, Lahamt, and Shlesh In all cases, Gdoilis and Ketanis, they need to wait three months. Chutz, accept. Migil Yoyris, Mushachrarus, Gdoil. Oh, here's a chedush. A convert. A maidservant set free. Who are Gdoilis? Who can theoretically bear children? We're not concerned. The Gemara will tell us because these women, although they're involved in relations, when they're in their. Uh, non-Jewish status, but they uh, take preca- precautionary measures to uh, avoid to avoid becoming Miss Aber. Today they would say taking the pill. So, in this case, we're not chayshish and uh, they don't need to wait three months. But a ketana? Even if she's a Bas Yisrael, she does need to wait three months. Why? What's going on? So again, when it comes to when it comes to um, all the other cases, we're geyser. We say, look, even if it's not practical, we're geyser. Uh, we're concerned about a case where it would be applicable and would be a concern. So why is it that when it comes to a katana bas Yisrael, we're not chayshish? We're not concerned about uh, it uh, being applied to Agdoila as well. Now, what, what are we speaking about? The Mai, even me, if uh, she walked off from her husband, Amr Shmuel Chadazim, Shmuel already tells us elsewhere that by uh, Mion, since this, isn't, this is not a method applied to Agdoila, it's apparent that it was Aktana, in which case we're not going confuse, to confuse the two, and therefore there's no need to wait three months. Ibe get, but if it was through a get, Ha'akamar Shmuel de Baya. Shmuel himself tells us that she, if she separates through a get. She needs to wait three months, even though she was a katana. The Omar Shmuel, Shmuel tells us, Mi'ana Baya, if she walked away from him, Eina Tzricha Lahamten, Shlesha Chadashin. There's no need to wait three months. But, Nasan no get, if he gave her a get, Tzricha Lahamten, Shlesha Chadashin. Then, she has to wait those three months. So what, do we, what does Shmuel mean when he says uh, Aktana is exempted from this halach? Ela biznus. Apparently there was a znus incident. In this case, we're not going to apply the three-month period. You know why? Uznus biktana lo For Aktana to be engaged in this inappropriate behavior is not something which is shachiach. And therefore, we're not going to make this gzir. So according to the second lashon of Shmuel, if it's a situation of znus by Iktana, we're not chayshish, because it's something like shchiach. But this is in contrast 
to the first version of Shmuel, where he told us that uh, even a Ektana, uh, in a case of Znus, would have to wait three months because unfortunately the concept, the concept of Znus is Shriach by Egdel. So we make Egzer on account of Egdel. And here in the second Lashon, he takes a different approach. He says, look, let's focus on this particular uh, setup. Ktanos Nus, that's not Shriach. This combination is Loi Shriach, and therefore we're not Goizer. So that's that uh, nuance between the first and second Lashon of Shmuel. Do we look at the full picture of this or this particular circumstance? Another chilek we saw was that in the first Lashon of Shmuel, any G'dayl has to wait. We're going to the second Lashon of Shmuel. If it's a G'yeris, Mishuch Reres, even if they're G'dayl, you don't have to wait. And the more will explain right now. Why? G'yeris or Mishuch Reres? The Shekhech Buznus, in these cases, they were certainly involved in Znus before they joined the Jewish nation. Ligzer, why don't we apply Xera there? Have them wait three months. Says the Gemara, who the Amak Rabbi Yaisi? Shmuel is following Rabbi Yaisi's Shita, going to see in a minute. He holds that uh, these women, they take uh, precautionary me- measures to uh, avoid becoming Miss Aber. To avoid conception. Oh, now as Rashi points out, this will not help an Isha Yisraelis. So even an Isha Yisraelis who was involved, Chachman al is Nus, she needs to wait three months. What do you mean, why? Why is she different than the Gyaris, Mishachreris, who avoid Ibor? And the answer is, Rashi says, because we're Geyser Atunisuin. We're concerned about the other issue who actually got married and then separated and wants to remarry. Well, we have to wait three months. So therefore, we apply the halach to all the Israelis, all the Jewish women equally. As opposed to the Goyim. The Goyim became a Yid, Goyeris. The maidservant who was partially pretty much a Goyim. And then she was Meshuchar, she was set free, in which case she turns into Israelis. In this case, there's no room for the Gzeera. There's no concern that if we allow them to marry without this three-month period, we're going to do the same in the case of of marriage, in the case of a, a, a guy who was married and then converts, becomes a Yisrael. You know why? Because, as Rashi points out based on the Gemara coming up, that the, these women are careful in advance, in anticipation of their conversion or being set free by their owner, uh, they prepare themselves. They don't want to create confusion, mix up their children, create confusion in the yichas of their children. Therefore, they, they ensure that they remain free of ibur, and therefore there's no concerns there. And we don't have to make them wait three months. Okay. Where do we find this concept? That there's less of a concern by a guy who the Amak Rabbi Yaisi, like Rabbi Yaisi, the son, an Isha who is Megayer, Vashvuya, an Isha who is taken into captivity, Vashivcha, or maidservant, Shaniftu. This is going on the the um, the prisoner who was uh, redeemed, Vishen is Gairu. This is going back to Giyaris. Vishen is Tachru. This is going on the Shivcha. Sricha is Lahamten Gimel Chadashim. If they want to marry a Yid, you have to wait three months. Zivir Rabbi Yehuda. You want to know what's going on? You know, you want to know if the child is was fathered by a Jewish father or not? You want to ascertain the yichas. So to achieve clarity, wait three months. Three months is, a, is enough time to to determine whether she's Muberis. That's when you start seeing the the ibur. So according to Rabbi Yehuda, in all these cases, Srichais Lahamten Gimel Chadash. Rabbi Yisi Mater Le'Ares V'Lenasei Miad. Go ahead, marry right away. What's his reason? Because engaged in Znus will engage with a Moich, um, some sort of um, wad, some sort of material, uh, a barrier, pretty much a barrier, to prevent the, the Zera from achieving conception. 
And therefore, in all these cases, Giyodesh, Shvuish, all these cases, where there's a concern about Znus, the Isha will avoid Ibor, in which case there's no concern or confusion. I understand that a Giyodesh will be careful. We you know why. It's in the works. It's on the table. Kimi the data like a yuri. She plans on converting. Mentor and Nafsha shall guard herself. Kadei lahafchen ve'in zera. She nizer bekedusha to differentiate between a child who was fathered by a Jewish father. Or ve'in zera she nizer shle bekedusha. And between the uh, the child that was uh, fathered when she was uh, when she was not a Yisraelis. So it's a question of which father it is. That's a question of when she conceived it. So certainly she wants to keep that distinction. And she'll be careful to avoid Ibor when she's still a guy. Likewise, Shvuya, Vishif Khanami, these uh, captive or uh, maidservants, Nami, Kivun, the Shami, Marayu. Once they overhear their captors, their uh, bosses, uh, planning their release. Umim Tirinaf Shayu. They listen in and they are careful now to uh, avoid Ibor. Eliyahu says, B'shem Ba'ayin. But let's say a Shifcha was released due to the fact that her boss damaged her eye or her tooth. And the Allah has to set her free. That's a sudden event, a sudden development. That's not anticipated, it's not planned. Hechem Ishkachzla. In that case, how can you justify the halacha? Perhaps you'll say, You're right, if it's a sudden development. Rabbi will certainly agree that there's a concern. But now we're going to the Mishnah. Otherwise. Anusa Mafuta, Anisha was engaged in a forced relationship or coerced relationship. She has to wait that three month period before she remarries. Rabbi Go ahead, get engaged, get married right away. We're speaking about oynes and mafata. That's not something expected or anticipated. So bottom line is, what is Rav Yesi's reason when he's martyred these women to go marry right away? Ela Rabbi says, Rabbi, I'll tell you the pshat. Isha mezana, an Isha who's engaged in these extramarital relations with men, misapeches, she will overturn herself, she'll like this aber, after the action has to take a quick uh, bodily shift so that the Zerah is diverted, doesn't achieve Ibor. That explains all these cases. Whether it's a Giyaris, a Shifcha, a Shvuya, even a Shifcha who was released on account of the Shein Va'ayin being damaged, or the Oynes, the Mafata. All these cases. Bottom line is, she avoids becoming Mu'uberis. Vidach, what does the other sheet hold? Rabbi Duhu is concerned even in these cases. Why isn't this a good uh, method? He says, look, perhaps... It works sometimes, but Chashinin were concerned. Shemar is half yafa. Perhaps she didn't shift herself enough in, in a way that's going to be an effective um, a, a preventer of evil. So, bottom line is, according to Rabbi Yasi himself, we're very makel. He says, even when it comes to an Isha Yisraelis, that's a, that's a new Chiddush. Which we didn't have up until this point. Anisha Yisraelis is a gtoila. But since she's involved in Znus, she'll make sure that she doesn't become Uberis. And the same thing applies to the, applies to the Shifcha, who had the Shein Va'ayin damaged. In that case as well, even though it wasn't planned or anticipated, but Isha Mezana Mesapechas. Okay, so let's make a quick uh, summary of the, of the Sugi up until this point. Generally, Anisha has to wait three months between between marriages in order to identify the child. We have some exceptions to the rule. We have Shmuel Aleph, Shmuel the first version, who says that it applies to all women, whether they're adults who are capable of bearing children or even katanas. We do have three exceptions when it comes to katana. Exceptions based on the fact that either they're not, not common cases, such as by the huchlif for the women who were, who were switched before the marriage, or the giyoris, mishachreris, katanois, 
because the whole concept of gear and shikhr is not common, therefore we don't include the katana in the case. And in the case where the katana just left her husband, that's a method which is totally not reminiscent of the way Yagdaila leaves her husband, and therefore there's no room for Gzeira Atu Gdaila. In Shmuel Bays, we apply more, more exceptions. So of course, Ktana uh, Huchlefu and Giyarish Mishachreras and Baimun, but he adds Znus as well because Znus with Ktana is uncommon. We even have exceptions by the Gdaila. A Giyaris, a Mishachreras, who are Gdailais, we're not concerned. You know why? Because Shmuel uh, follows Rabbi Yaisi's concept that uh, an Isha who's involved in these activities will make sure that she avoids Ibor. She avoids Ibor. And therefore, we're not choshesh for Ibor when she was at a pre gear or pre shikhrer stage. But, as Rashi points out, if she's an Israelis, and a gedola. even if it's a Znus experience, we apply the Gzera on account of Israelis who actually married properly. This concern does not apply by the Goyim, because, as we explained at the end of the Suga, a Goy, even if she's properly married, but if she's expecting Shekhar, or she's expecting to convert, she'll make sure to do something to avoid Ibor, in order to be mavchen, to allow her to uh, make that distinction between a child born when she was a guy, conceived when she was a guy, and a Jewish child. Finally, we have Rabbi Yesi, who adopts a more lenient approach. He says, not only in the above mentioned cases do we not apply exeri, even by Yeznus of Yisrael Gedoyla, we're not concerned because Isha Mesapecha Siyafi Yafa, and likewise by the uh, Shifra, who was released through the Shein Va'ayin method, in that case as well, since it's extramarital activities, they uh, are mishapich to avoid evil. Bimayu Kahanas. Getting back to the Mishnah, where there was an unfortunate switch of women, and they were over all those Averis, and have to bring all those Karbanis. The Mishnah concludes with the uh, phrase, Bimayu Kahanas. If these Noshim were actually Kehanis, which sounds like they, they were from families of Kehanim, they were daughters of a Kehanim, Nifsalu min ha-truma, and according to some girls, it's Nifsalu min ha-kahuna. Okay, so as a result of this unfortunate mishap, they become disqualified from Kehuna. Now, the Gemara at this point figures, disqualified from Kehuna means that although this uh, story happened uh, by it wasn't uh, it wasn't anybody's fault so she uh, interacted with her with a, a stranger with a uh, an erva I remember each one is an ish ish right so they interacted with a stranger as married so even though it's considered an anus an accident it's going to disqualify her from being married, staying, staying married, or getting married to a coin. That's the halacha. By Yisrael, it doesn't work like that. Eishas Yisrael is mutter, even if she was engaged in znus ba'inus. But here we're speaking about, in a koyin context, she can't marry a coin under these circumstances. It sounds in the Mishnah. That's only because she was born into a coin family. Her father is a coin. Kayihana is in, only by Kayihana is Yisraelis noy. Doesn't apply to Yisraelis. And that's untrue. If she's a, a wife of a kain, if she's currently married to a kain, even if she was, in, if she was uh, a Yisraelis from home, this experience disqualifies her from uh, from the kuhuna. She has to leave her husband. Ema rather learn like this. Oh, if their husbands were kaihanim, this experience makes them usher on the husband. Again, we have a kasha, Neshei Kahanim in. Only if they're currently married to a kain, Neshei Yisrael Moy. Suppose they're currently married to Yisrael. Well, this Nus experience, this allows her from marrying a kain in the future as well. V'amar Amram. Rav Amram told us, Ho Milsa, Amulan Rav Sheshis. This uh, following halacha was taught to us by Rav Sheshis. Van Harinu La'ainen Mimas Nisan, who actually brought us a riot. 
So there's halacha from a mission later on, from Gimel. What is the halacha? Eish Yisrael Shenansa, the wife of Yisrael, who experienced an oynus, even though she can stay married, because it wasn't willing, it wasn't rotsen. She can't go on and marry a Kayan. So even if she's currently married to Yisrael, this experience disqualifies her, this allows her from marrying a Kayan in the future. Amarav, are you right? Hachi Amar. Mishnah is not speaking about this halacha altogether. Rather, im hayu kayhanis, nusoyis li Yisrael, we're speaking about truma. If these daughters of kayhanim, who ate truma prior to, to their marrying a Yisrael, which disqualifies them from truma as long as they're married, so im hayu kayhanis, nusoyis li Yisrael, at that point they had this oinus experience. You know what it does to them? Suppose they end up leaving their husbands, the Israel, and they go back home. So typically, she reverts to her former status with respect to truma eating privileges, but in this case, not. This oinus experience, the oinus with the, with the uh, strange man, which is pretty much a, a znus, because she's an ashes ish, it's chayvi krisis, it makes her puzzle, not only from going and marrying a coin, but she loses the achilas truma privileges, the benishayu, from uh, back home, and they're, uh, it's called benishayu, the woman's uh, home, basically, when she goes back home to her father. So, bottom line is, even a znus ba'inus makes her usher to marry a kain and makes her puzzle from eating truma. Hadron Allah, arbo achir. Okay, we're on to a new pair. Kachoyles leave him So, we know that Ivama is a candidate for either, either Yibam or Chalitza. Now what happens through Yibam? So when the Yavam lives with her at marriage, she becomes his wife, and he's, she's Yaitse the Mitzvah, he's Yaitse the Mitzvah of Yibam. If he wants to be a he has to give her a get. What happens through Chalitza? So that too will exempt, exempt them from the Mitzvah, and now she's free to marry anybody she wishes. But, Midra Bonan, there are two halachas that are applied in this case. Number one, a chalutza is, um, is asr to go marry a kain. We had this a couple of days ago, it's uh, based on a drasha, a smachta, a isha, a grusha, a isha, we include a chalutza as well. Just like a grusha, a chalutza also cannot marry a, a kain. Because a chalutza is, is reminiscent of a grusha, likewise. Midra Bonan, one may not engage with the relatives of his chalutza. We treat her like a divorcee, and just like you can't marry the relatives of a grusha, likewise, relatives of a chalutza, and she can't marry his relatives either. We treat them as divorced. This is the Dim Midra Bonan. Says the Mishnah, Ha'choyles leave him to. Suppose, Ruvain passed away, leaving Rachel behind, and Shimon approached Rachel and did chalitza. It turns out that she was expecting and she actually gave birth. What happens now? How do we treat the chalitza that had already occurred? So it depends. The child turns out to be a healthy child, a viable child, in which case, <laughs> Reuven actually has a child. Yibam is inapplicable here. So the chalitza is valueless. Who muta We treat the chalitza as though it never happened. He can go marry the relatives of Rachel. He mutaras She can marry his relatives. The chalitza has no effect on her marrying a kain in the future. Look, she had a child. There's no need to make yibum a chalitza. But a navlat shakayam. Suppose a child is an unhealthy child and he's not viable. In this case. The departed fellow Ruvay never had children. And she needs Yibam or Chalitza. Chalitza turns out to be a valid Chalitza. And we treat it as such. Who also be He can't marry her relatives. Vyasur be Kreivav, she can't marry his. U Paslam and Akahuna, she becomes Paslam Kahuna. The same Allah applies to Yibam. Hakoinis is Yibimtoi. He did Yibam. Vinimza Smubers, it turns out she was expecting. We all done, she gave birth. It depends what happened. If it was a viable child, in which case there was no place for Yibum, Yaiti, he has to separate. They have to bring a carbon because it turns out that she was 
An Aishas Ach, a regular Arab, there's no justification for Yibam in this, in this case. They need to bring a Chattis. But, Vim Ein Havlat Shal Kayama, if it turns out that the child was not Bar Kayama, and he's not to be reckoned with, and it's as though she had no children, and Yibam was mandated, Ye Kayim. In that case, he can hold on to her. Let's say we're not sure. A child was born, uh, say, seven months into the second marriage. Suffolk meant Now we don't know whether he's a nine month, a full term baby belonging to Reuven, or Suffolk ben Shiva Lachan, or he's a seventh month premature baby belonging to Shimon. There's no choice but to say Yaitzi, he has to separate because she might be an Erva, she might be an Isha who doesn't need Yibam because Reuven had a child. But listen to this the child is okay. Either way, Ashi says, You know why? <laughs> because if he's Reuven's child, that's fine. If he's Shimon's child, that means the Reuven never had a child, and Yibam was mandated, so it's fine. Either way, the child is safe. But, V'chayavin, Basham Tali, Shimon and Rachel have to bring a carbon Asham Tali on account of this suffix that perhaps this was Reuven's child. She did not need Yibam. And in effect, Shimon married an Erev. Itmar, we learned... A machlekes between Riachon and Shlakish. In the case of Achilas from Oberis, Veipila. Suppose he did chalitza to Oberis, and then she miscarried. It turns out that Lima Freya retroactively, there was no children. Retroactively, she was Yevam. Can this chalitza work? <laughs> Can the chalitza be activated retroactively? Between Rabbi Yechon Amar, he says, Of course it's a proper chalitza. It's not considered a, a deficient chalitza which would require all the brothers to go uh, and do their own chalitza as we learned a couple of days ago. Uh, chalitza, uh, ideally, would be a chalitza which serves as an alternative to Yibam. In that case, when one brother does it, he exempts them all, but in a chalitza where it's deficient, basically it means... The situation is not Yibam and Abel, such as over here when she's Mubaris. You're not meant to do Yibam as we learned in the Mishnah. So in this case, the Chalitza done to the Isha, even though it turns out that it was justified, perhaps it would not be considered a proper Chalitza. Says Rabbi Yechon, yes it is. Retroactively, we treat it as a proper Chalitza, and once it was done by one brother, he exempts the ball. Rish Lagash Amar, no, it's Sricha Chalitza Menachem, it's Chalitza. As it was being done, it was an improper chalitza because Yibam was not an allowed option at that point. You can't do Yibam when she's Mubaris. So although it turns out that it was needed, the child was not Kayam, the child was uh, a non-viable child, in which case there is chalitza, but at the point of, of, of the actual chalitza being done, it was, this was an unknown, and uh, since Yibam was not an option, the chalitza is called a chalitza psula, in which case all the brothers have to go over the process and do it again. The Mark explains, Rabbi Yechon Omar, ain't sir, chal, ain't not tzricha chalitza menachan, she doesn't need more chalitza. Chalitza muberas, shmo chalitza. The chalitza done to an expected woman has value, is applied. O bias muberas, shmo bia, likewise. A muberas, even though you're not meant to, approach her at that point because perhaps the child will be viable in which case she's never but but the the beer that was done has validity that's Rabbi Yechon Shita we can ratify it retroactively when we see a child is a non-viable child why? why? but my Kamefli what's the uh, the point of the Machlekes? Iboy is same a crop, perhaps based on a pasuk. Iboy is same a svar, perhaps based on rationale. Iboy is same a svar, perhaps based on logic. Rabbi Yechon is He says like this. It's just a matter of uh, of, of, of of facts here, right? Im Yov El Yov Yemer. Suppose El Yov would arrive and say, "Look, the Hadi Abra, this child that she's carrying, me puli maplo. She will uh, miscarry him." Well, let's say this would happen. You can see the future. Mila bas chalitza v'yibami. We did not accept that she is even currently a yivama, an active yivama who requires chalitza or yibum. Hashtanami. Now as well, even though you didn't, you were not in the possession of those facts. 
you were not really aware of that information beforehand when you did the chalitza, when you did the yibam. But bottom line is, it turns out that you're right on. You were on target. You were lucky. <laughs> she uh, miscarried. Tigli Muslim Afreya. So in hind vision, it turns out she was a Yivama. She did need Yivam or Chalitza. And therefore it's valid. First look at no. Tigli Muslim Afreya We don't uh, look back in hindsight. At the point of Yivam and Chalitza, was it appropriate? Was it in place? No. You had no idea whether or not she really needs it. And therefore, it cannot be considered a proper process. Remember you say Makro, perhaps based on a Pasuk. Rabbi Yechna Sabar, when the Pasuk describes his fellow passing away without children, it says, Ubein ein loy. He has no children. Amr Achman, as the Pasuk, uh, that's how the Pasuk describes him. Vahal Lesley, bottom line is, he has no children. Look, she miscarried. And therefore, the Chalitza or the Yibam is valid. We had this uh, a couple of days ago. It's the, the extra yud in there. Which leads to the drush of Ayin love. Focus, concentrate, investigate. Look into this matter. And if she's expecting, wait. Hold your horses. Wait and see what happens. Terry here is indicating to you not to jump the gun. A premature Yibam Machalitza. While she is still more embarrassed. Her situation unknown. That's not justified and not valid. Okay, so once again, we have a Shiloh by Mulberis who ended up miscarrying. The child ended up being not a viable child. Can we look back and say, well, the Chalitza even done in the Ibor state is considered valid or do we say no? At that point, it was unknown and therefore it's considered possible. Rabbi Yechon says it's kosher. Rishlakish says possible. He's going to have a cash on Rishlakish from our mission. He's going to prove that it works. His fellow did Chalitza. Then they discover that she is Mulberis. If the child is not Kayama, the Chalitza takes hold. In fact, who also he may not marry her relatives. Same with her to his relatives. Upasla Manakahuna. She's considered a chalutza. Says Rabbi Yechanan, doesn't this prove my point? It works well according to me. That Amina chalitza moberes shma chalitza. A chalitza applied to moberes has validity. That explains the mission. Mishnah machi pasla. That explains why the chalitza invalidates her from marrying a coin. It's a valid chalitza. Elu de dach, but according to you, the amras chalitza moberes loy shma chalitza. Chalitza done to moberes does not carry weight. Am I post Manakunas? So why does it have any effect on her status? Amalei Rishlakish responds, Midra Bonon, Uluchumra Ba'alma, you're right. Minatera has no validity, but Midra Bono, we treat it as a proper chalitza to the extent that we prevent her from marrying a coin. Ikadami, in the second version, it was Eisvi Rishlakish Rabbiechen. He was the one asking to Rabbiechen, Ein Avlat Shal Kayama. If the child ends up being not Kayama, who also be curvious, Seha. So he may not, he may not, may not marry her relatives, via Surabi Kurevav, and likewise she to his relatives, Apostle Manakahuna, she possibly. This works according to me, says Rishlokish. That mean I hold. Chalitza's Muberes, Loishma Chalitza. That Chalitza done to Muberes doesn't really matter. Hainu Diktani, Apostle Manakahuna, Lechumra. That explains why the mission says. The Chalitza disqualifies her from marrying a coin. That's all it says. Which sounds like it's just a Chumrah. We treat it like a proper Chalitza in order to avoid misconception and confusion. But like Tanya, the mission clearly, the mission clearly does not say, she, has to, she doesn't need any more Chalitzas, which would indicate that that Chalitza is a proper Chalitza. Because it's not true. It is a Chalitza Psula. And she needs to go back to the other brothers to address their bond to her. El didach, but according to Europe Yechnan, that a chalitza in this case is proper and valid. The Mishnah should have clearly said that this chalitza is a full-fledged chalitza which carries the day, which exempts her completely 
and she no longer has to make her have to make her has to make her rounds amongst amongst the brothers. Amalei Shabbichan responds, "Ena Chanami." The truth is that it's considered a proper chalitza, and she no longer has to make her rounds around the brothers and get more chalitzas. Why did the Tana Rachel like Pasla? Why did the Mishnah say uh, only Pasla and Akuhuna? Why didn't the Mishnah explain it further? Because in the Rasha, in the case where it was a proper child, in which case the whole Chalitza didn't work, the Mishnah uses the word Loi Pasla. The Chalitza does not disqualify her from marrying a coin. Right? Which is really the only thing that the Mishnah could have, could have said. Right? In that, in that context. Right? What could we say? She needs more chalitza. She doesn't. Uh, she ended up having a child. She's not a Yivama. So therefore, on account of that, you, the Mishnah used matching terminology in the Sefer, Tana Sefer, Pasla, and the Sefer, where it turns out that the Vlad was uh, not Kayama, and she needed the Yivama chalitza. The chalitza does take effect, and the squalifers are from marrying a coin, but really it's more than that. It's a proper chalitza, and she no longer needs to make a rounds to the other brothers. The chalitza is considered uh, an end-all chalitza. Okay. Says the Gemara, we're going to focus on the next part of the, of the Mishnah. Until now we spoke about the chalitza portion of the Mishnah, now we're going to focus on the Yivam portion. And basically the same type of kashas back and forth. Eisfer, Bechem, Rishlokesh, Comes Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yechanan was the one who said that Yibam, even in a Ibor state, which turned out to be an unsuccessful Ibor, even that Ibor at that point, is, Yibam at that point, is considered a proper, a valid Yibam. Not Lachat Chila, but the Yavid, once it's done, it's done. Here comes Akasha. Eisvi, Rabbi Yechanan is Lakish. Eina Vlad Shal Kayama. In the second portion of the Mishnah, he did Yibam. Yibam, it turns out, she was Mubaris. It was an unsuccessful pregnancy, which in effect means she's a Yavama. What does the mission say? Yikayim. Yikayim means that uh, you know he's free to hold on to her because she's a proper wife. She's a Yavama who he did Yibum to. Okay? Now, Bishlam Lididi, this works well according to me, that Amina Chalitza Mabaris, Shema Chalitza, I maintain that even in the state of Ibor, Chalitza works. Ubias Mubaris, Shema Bia, Bia as well works in that state. Bishlam Machak Tani Dekayim. That explains what the Mishnah says, that uh, it's up to him. Uh, he can hold on to her. Right? He doesn't have to, but if he wants to, he can hold on to her. Because it turns out that uh, she's a Yevama. And the beer that he did beforehand worked. Right? Um, so now it's up to him. He can hold on to her, stay married, or they can separate at that point. He really did his mitzvah sibam. But according to Yurish Lakish, who maintains that Chalitas Mubers, Loishma Chalitza, Ubias Mubers, Loishma Bia. You can't leave it up to him. Yikayim, it's optional. You can hold on to her or separate. He has to do Yibum, which was yet undone. At this point, no Yibum was done. Yach serve Yivoyel v'yikayim y'boyle. The mission should explain itself. He has to go ahead and do Yibum again. Ma yikayim, yach serve Yivoyel v'yikayim in a chanami. That's what the mission means. Yikayim means he has to, again, do Yibum, live with her as married. The leisagi, is a gerst, the leisagi, balavachi, it doesn't work without that. Meaning, of course, you have to go back and do the Yibum. Because Yibam done in a state of Mubaris doesn't work. Ikadamri. There was another version of Esri Rishlakish Rabbiyechan. It was the other way around. Rishlakish Eshkin Rabbiyechan. From the words of the Mishnah. Ein Avlad Shal Kayam Yekayim. From that same, very same phrase. It was an unsuccessful pregnancy. She's a Yivama. Yekayim. The more figures at this point, Yekayim means he has to hold on to her. He has to do another Yibam. Bishlam Yiladi works according to me, Damina. Because I maintain chalitzas mubaris loishma chalitza, ubiyas mubaris loishma biyah. That explains the mission. Hi, Nitani. What does yakayim mean? According to this version, yachsar v'yivol v'yakayim. Do the sagi b'lav hachi has to go ahead and live with her again as married because otherwise he hadn't done a mitzvah. 
because the Bia done when she was Mubaris doesn't really carry much weight. This supports my opinion, says Rishlokish. Elo will deduct, but according to you, why you kaim? He's forced to hold on to her. He already did his mitzvah. Ratsa yaitzi. Ratsa yakaim yabayla. Mishnah should have given him the option. You can separate, you can hold on to her. He already did his mitzvah. And a chanam, yes, it's true. That's true. It's optional. Why did the Mishnah say yakaim? On account of the uh, terminology used in the first part of the Mishnah. I did Tani Reisha yaitzi on account of the word yaitzi. Employed in the first part of the Mishnah, when it turns out that the Vlad is Kayama, and it was a, a wrongful uh, Yibam, so he has to separate. Tanan Amisefi Yikayim, we use matching, contrasting uh, terms in the Sefer. Over there it was Yaitzi, or Yaitzi Kayim can hold on to it, but of course, he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to hold on to it, because he already did his Yibam. A Yibam done for more bears works. Meisvi, here comes a kasha or biyechin. A koyin says he vimtu. Vimtu says mo beres. He marries his yivama. Turns out she was expecting. Ha rezu loy tinasi tsarasa. So there were two uh, yivamis there from the same family. He did yibum to Rachel. They discovered that she's mo beres. Leah can't marry out. She can't marry uh, a stranger. Why? You can't take a chance. Shemo yehiv lachel ben kayam. It might turn out that this. Uh, Ibor and Rachel is going to be a successful pregnancy. And therefore, don't take chances. Other rabbis, the opposite. Ki If you're concerned about that, of course, Mifta Tsarasa. The child will be viable. A healthy child. A living child. Then there's no Yibam needed at all. Of course, the Tsar is free to marry. El Aim are rather like this. Shema lo Vlad ben Kayama. You can't take a chance. Could turn out that Rachel's Ibor will not be successful, in which case Yibum would be required. So, Mrs. Tsara, Leah, don't don't go marry out. Wait around, see what happens. Says the Gemara, there's a kasha on Rabbi Yechanan. If it works even for Moberes, I my loy tinasi tsarasa. Why can't Leah marry out? Ti pater bevia shel chaverta. Why can't she uh, become potter through the yibum done to Rachel? Basically, it's it's memanavshach. Either way, she's good. If it turns out that the child is a ben kayama, in which case family had a child, there's no yibum. Of course, Leah is free to marry out. If it turns out that the, the child dies. In which case, the fellow passed away, uh, Reuven, had no children. Yibam is needed. Well, guess what? You did Yibam. You did Bia to Rachel when she was more embarrassed. And that works according to you, Rabbi Yechanan. I'm Rabbi Ye. I'll tell you, Pshat. All agree that um, Bia for Mubaris doesn't work. So he's changing the whole equation. You're not allowed to do Bia to Mubaris. You can't take a chance. So Bia in that state is, uh, is not valid. The question is regarding chalitza. Rabbi Yechonon Savar chalitza is muberes shema chalitza. Bia is muberes loy shema bia. Although bia done to muberes doesn't work, but chalitza does. Rish Lakis Savar. Bia is muberes loy shema bia. But chalitza is muberes loy shema chalitza. According to him, there's no differentiation, as I explained earlier. Until you know what's going on, uh, you can't apply bia or chalitza. Going to Rabbi Yechonon? No. Bia, you can't. You're taking a chance, a risk of an Avera, but Chalitza, that works. That explains the price. Tzara, don't, don't go marry out because perhaps the Bia done, because the, the, uh, the Bia done to Rachel, when she's a Mubaris, won't work. So even if the child ends up uh, being a Enei Be Kayama, she was an unsuccessful pregnancy, in which case she needs a, a yibum, but the yibum at this at this point doesn't work. So wait around, see what happens. Only Rav, I don't understand this distinction. E bias moberes shma bia, chalitza moberes shma chalitza. How can you draw that line between bia and chalitza? Either or, either all or nothing. If uh, bia works, chalitza works. V bias moberes loy shma bia, 
And if it's like you're saying that beer doesn't work, chalitza is more not milashma chalitza. Chalitza wouldn't work either. You know why? Don't We have a, we have a, a formula that we're meant to follow when it comes to yibum. Remember, yibum and chalitza are like two sides of the, of the coin. Right? So, either both are activated or none. If you don't have the ability to do one, how can you do the other? The kala oila liyibum. An isha who presents herself liyibum oila lechalitza. Is a chalitza candidate as well? The kala shein oila liyibum, but an isha is not a candidate for yibum, such as the mubaris. According to your opinion, Abai, ein no oila lechalitza cannot be a candidate for chalitza either. So your your uh, setup doesn't work. Ella <laughs> marava says Rava. I'll explain to you the price. What was your cash? We're speaking about a case where Reuben passes away, leaving behind Rachel and Leah. He did Yibam to uh, Shimon did Yibam to Rachel. We tell Leah, wait, hang around, don't marry out. The question was, Miman of Shech. Going to Rabbi what's the problem? If the lot is Shel Kayama, well, guess what? You don't need Yibam at all. If the blood is not shel kayama, then the bia done to the isha is considered valid retroactively. The answer is as follows: Elamarava hachikama. The brayse means like this: Hakoyin esivimti, v'nim tzismu beres, harez eloy tenasi terasa, yibum to beres does not allow the tzara to marry out. Shem yeh blood ben kayama. Maybe the child will be a viable child. U bia tzismu beres loishma bia. Be it done to Muberis. In this case, when it turns out that the child is a Vlad Kayam, of course, that Bia doesn't work. Right? The whole reason why it worked, according to Rabbi Yechman, was in a case where it turns out that it was an unsuccessful pregnancy, and you apply that concept retroactively. But in this case, we're concerned that perhaps it is going to be a, vi- a viable child. Right? In that case, anything done to the mother during the uh, pregnancy period is certainly not valid. Because she's not a, a Yivama, she doesn't need Yivam. Ubiyas Muberis, Loish Mabia. Bia done in this state to the Muberis doesn't work. Bechalitis Muberis, Loish Machalitza. Likewise, Chalitza doesn't work. But then the question was, who cares? Why do you need to get involved in Yivam or Chalitza to begin with if she's going to have a proper child? So either way, why can't the. Why can't the. Um, tsara just go marry out? Mimanav Shech, right? If it turns out that the pregnancy is unsuccessful, so the bia done to Rachel is a valid bia contra Biechanan. We treat it as such retroactively. If the child is a successful, viable, healthy child, then you don't need Yibum at all. Here comes the punchline. Vavlad poiter We're concerned that she might give birth to a healthy child, and Allah is. We only reckon with this child. When he's born. When he's born, you have a living being. <laughs> now, oh, the mother doesn't need Yibam. But as long as she's still in the uh, Abu Bera state, she's in limbo. In the interim, you can't do anything. You're stuck. Right? So we're sort of looking back retroactively and saying, look, right now it turned out to be a proper child. No Yibam is required going forward. But this status was not applied when she was still expecting. When do we consider the, uh, the child as a child of his father? When do we consider Reuben to having, having left the world with, and, and leaving children behind? That's when the child was born. That's when we consider, consider him as having left the child behind. But not when she was Mubaris. So in the pre-birth state, You don't treat this child as a born child. In this case, you can't. You can't allow the, the Tzara to marry out. She's not yet Potter. On the other hand, you can't say, well, let the Bia done at that point work. It turns out the child was a viable child. No even was needed, and the Bia is invalid. That's the shot in the Brisa. Okay, let's do a quick Hazar of today's daf. We discussed the Allah of 
separation. So between marriages, between interaction with men, you have to be mavchin. You want to uh, determine the identity of the of the uh, child the second time around. Therefore, you have to make that three-month separation period to determine whether or not the isha is mubaris from the first husband. Typically, we apply it to all cases, even g'dayla, even katanais, goyim, yidin, but we have several exceptions. We have shmol al, shmol beis, and rabbi yis, you had a chiddush, that uh, any time isha is engaged in improper relations, she ensures that she's not being misaber, and therefore, even by a Yisraelis who's mezana, we're not concerned. We had these women who were sw- swished before the uh, before the Nesun. It's, it's an issue of chayvik krisis, but it's an oynus. Still, the isha is puzzled from marrying a kain or from eating truma back home. A chalitza will be a don to embarrass when it turns out that the child is in uh, loy kayama, not a viable child, in which case yibum was required. How do we treat the chalitza done when it was in an ibur state? Rebbechan says it's okay, based on a svara. Look. It's just a matter of uh, factualities. If you know, if you would have known to begin with that this would happen, you would treat her as a, as a Yivama. So if it turns out she's Chayv in Yibum, it's valid. Or based on a Pasuk, Bain Engloy, he, he has no children, it turns out that he has no children. In both cases, Rosh Lakish says, it doesn't work. And we had a Chiddush at the end of the Gemara, according to all Shittas. When do we consider this man as having left behind a child when the child was born? All the best to you and Hatzlacha Rabba.